Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week I am going to start seam welding the Alferrari. Alright guys, welcome back and those of you who have been following along will have seen that uh, last week I meant to start seam welding the car and never actually got around to it but I did fix up a couple of the big rust holes that were in the floors of this car that people have been upset about for quite some time so it was uh, good to finally get them done, I was not concerned but uh, they are mostly patched up now. There are a couple of comments, if you missed it I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and um, think about subscribing hit the bell, helps us out. All right, um, so um, a couple of things about these uh, spots on the floor. Uh, there, there are the drain holes that I put back into the floor, and there are a couple of comments saying that I could have just blocked them up, which I suppose I probably could have. Um, again, and I'm not entirely sure why they are there. I, I always pictured because if your car flooded out inside, you could pull the plugs and, uh, and sort of let it drain. Um, I'm yeah not sure if that is actually the case. Uh, somebody also mentioned that it might be because of some process during the manufacturing that they sort of dip the cars or something and uh, and let them drain. I don't know, but um, the the things are back there. There's there's holes in the bottom of the back seat and in the bottom of the main floor as well. So they're all matching up. I've got to get plugs for some of them. So yeah, I'm not overly concerned about that. So today we're going to start seam welding, and uh, I think we're going to start in the engine bay. All right, so as I said, we're gonna start working with the seam welding in the engine bay. And basically what that means, as I mentioned last week, is all these panels on the, on the car are spot welded together by the factory. Um, it's a cheap, quick way of putting cars together and, um, and it's fine for a road car, but race cars, generally you want something a bit stiffer so that um, you can do your, your movement and suspension work through your actual suspension rather than having the body twist and you're trying to fight and control a twisting chassis. The more you uh, um, weld it together, the more solid it's going to get. And that's the point here today. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, go around to all these places. So you can see this panel along here is spot welded onto the outer wing. So I'm going to be doing sort of um, just stitching together about an inch at a time, inch, leave an inch or so, an inch, leave an inch or so, uh, all the way around and tie it all together. Now, a um, couple of theories about why you would leave an inch. Um, one, it takes less work and it's still almost as strong as welding it completely. But um, uh, also, it, if you do get a crack in a world, often it'll go to the end of the world. So if there's a gap, one world may crack and the next one may still hold strong. So it gives that break and that separation. So um, that's the theory anyway. So uh, I think it's time to start getting into this. And also the top of these reinforcement panels I, uh, I put in, I still want to actually trim them off and weld them onto the, uh, the body as well. So let's go through and start seam welding. Okay, so I'm reasonably happy with the engine bay for the time being. So now it's time to start working inside the car. And um, things like the tunnel, there's not, I'm gonna reinforce some of it, the center section, the original section, but um, a lot of the rest of it, I'm gonna wait until I actually get on the rotisserie because this dog's breakfast of my, uh, my tunnel mods that needs to be tidied up uh, will be done then. I'm gonna also seam weld all the way along here. It looks like it's, I, uh, I already did it along the, um, uh, the edge up here uh, for where this outer seal joins in. But uh, I'm also going to do it up through these corners. So just go around all of the seams, hence the name, seam welding, and, uh, and just tying it all together and making it nice and rigid.
Okay, so I'm back. Um, for you guys, it's been no time at all, but I've actually been away for the last couple of weeks, uh, having a fantastic time in Harry down in Tasmania. And uh, now I'm finally back, getting back into this and continuing on with the scene welding that I did start before. I've got a little bit more to do inside here, so I'm gonna keep going around the back and uh, doing around the, uh, the rear wheel arches and sort of getting the back end all uh, seam welded up. All right, and we have the entire back end is all seam welded. Um, everything I can sort of get to from the top, I've done, including in the rear. So now it's time to spin it around and get it back on the rotisserie so I can get underneath and I can finish off all the rest of the seam welding and also uh, all of the, uh, the unfinished tunnel and panel work. Shorty. What are you doing? All right, well, I just dragged in all of these parts that have been sitting and rusting out the front of my shed for um, 12 months or more now, uh, which is my rotisserie that I built uh, quite a while ago. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I've gotta go through and uh, start bolting it back onto my uh, chassis frame and, uh, and get the car back on it. It's going to require some modification because the car's been modified since. It's not going to fit directly on the uh, original mounting points, as in the, um, uh, the engine mounts have changed and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to have to modify this, but uh, let's start reassembly. All right, a bit of messing around, but we are back on the rotisserie, so now it's time to drop the hoist down and hopefully this thing doesn't just tip upside down. Um, it's got the roll cage in it now, so it's a slightly different balance to what it was before. Uh, so we're just gonna have to have a look. Well, that is gonna make things much, much easier getting uh, to the bottom of the car. It all spins nicely. There doesn't seem to be any um, weight bias either way. It spin, yeah, it's, it's good. So, uh, happy with that? All right, now I'm finally on the rotisserie. It's gonna be much easier to finish off my tunnel section. So that's the first thing I'm gonna tackle. Before any seam work or anything like that, uh, as you saw previously, all this stuff is just sort of tacked in there very loosely. There's big gaps everywhere. It's a bit of a mess and it's gonna need a little bit of tidying up. You can also see there's a bit of surface rust on it because uh, that was one of the few things that I didn't uh, put any weld through primer on. So uh, um, it needs to be uh, sort of cleaned up a bit. Uh, there's lots of comments about the weld through primer that I'm gonna have to take it off again before I paint. And yes, I am. It's just something that I have at hand that I just put over the top so that it stops it uh, flash rusting where I um, have played with it. The rest of the body has actually when it was sandblasted, was covered in kefos, which is, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's uh, some sort of chemical stuff that uh, stops it rusting. So this is still sort of basically bare metal with a, uh, a coating on it and it doesn't rust. So uh, it sits there for years and it, and it looks good. So I'm gonna go through now and uh, start tacking away and working away at this tunnel and uh, trying to make it one complete coherent piece. That was a lot of work, um, a lot of time backwards and forwards. I didn't film everything because it was just tedious backwards and forwards. And, uh, and now the tunnel is actually all, is all one piece. It's all solid with the car, which is great. So um, we can move on. 
And I think the next thing we need to do is my uh, removable tunnel window that I put in, the, that was obviously specifically so that you can get the um, get to the top gearbox bolt and get the starter motor and stuff on. Um, I need to actually weld in some captive nuts onto that. I tried it once, yonks ago, with uh, the car up the right way and trying to weld it upside down, and that was a horrible idea. Now I've got a rotisserie. Should be much, much easier. So let's do that. Alright, so my captive nuts on my little tunnel window are all in and ready to go. Um, I think I'll actually get on and do the uh, seam welding on the underside next week as uh, I am just definitely running down on time. But before we move on, I just wanted to uh, address, a lot of you were concerned when I was putting in the electric air conditioning that uh, whether my alternator was going to be up to scratch and the factory one that I used or the uh, the Camry one actually that I fit on there because I couldn't fit the big Ferrari one on there probably would not but I tell you what will this one Wasp Engineering uh, these guys are awesome uh, have actually built me a very very pretty custom alternator uh, it, this thing is actually a 175 amp alternator and makes 80% of its current at idle so um, it can power the air conditioning and all that sort of stuff. It is, uh, it is a, an awesome piece of gear and it's the exact same size and bolt on to the mounts and brackets and everything that I've already got so this will fit in the car and, uh, and more than do the job. Um, and uh, while they're there, they also built me this. This is a starter motor, which also fits the uh, BRZ gearbox, so same, same sort of thing. But this one's got a little bit more juice. So the original ones are 1.2 amp, I think. Uh, this is a 2 amp, uh, so it's got a hell of a lot more, um, more guts. And also it's got a, uh, a bracket that you can spin it all around 360, so you can change the angle of it um, however you need to, which is, uh, which is an added bonus. So thanks for the Wasp Engineering, and actually they are the same guys who built the, uh, the custom alternator on Harry uh, that, uh, that runs the electric air conditioning on that that uh, Classic Retrofit uses. So um, yeah, they know what they're talking about and uh, it definitely does the job because the aircon was working. So uh, in any case, I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, 1966 saw the introduction of the Ferrari 275 GTB 4 cam. The Scaglietti bodywork is mostly carried over from the Series 2 long nose, but now featured a bonnet bulge. The main upgrade was mechanical. It still retained a version of the Colombo V12, but now had four overhead camshafts instead of two, but it still retained two valves per cylinder. It also had six Weber carburetors and used a dry sump, making 300 horsepower at 8,000 RPM. American importer Luigi Canetti asked Sergio Scaglietti and Enzo Ferrari to build a spider version. These were informally called the Nart Spiders after Canetti's North American racing team. Canetti originally ordered 25 spiders from Scaglietti, however, due to poor sales, only 10 were made, making it one of the rarest 275s. All right, um, I'm actually quite happy uh, getting it back on the rotisserie again is a big step forward and um, I got most of the seam welding done at least on the inside, got the tunnel finished, big moves to uh, getting this done. Grab it. And uh, yes, and we have our assistants in here today, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, so like, subscribe if you haven't, if you want to let Jeff know what you're thinking of the videos, he loves to read your comments, and if you want to follow Jeff a day early with our ads, join him on Patreon, and I think that's everything. Yep, we'll yep. see you in the next one. See you guys. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Was that fun? Was that good? Was that nice? Oh, you like she, look, she likes, look at her face. What about this one? There's this one too. <laughs> you guys always want to see the pets. <laughs> <laughs> So the introduction of the 
It's mostly carried over from the Long Nose 2 Series. Series 2 Long Nose. The Scaglietti Bodywork is mostly carried over from the Long Nose 2 Series. Series 2 Long Nose. The Scaglietti Bodywork. The main... But now had two overhead camshafts instead of four. Now four overhead camshafts instead of two. And two cylinders per valve. Two valves per cylinder. Two valves per cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> but now had two overhead camshafts. Yes. No. Four. Yes. Two Dry sump system making 400 horsepower at 8,000 RPM. Now do it again. All right. <laughs> 